Hey guys, Omni here. So as you guys know, we love the Suicide Squad here on the channel and I had a blast with it. Not the perfect film, but it has easily climbed the ranks of my DCEU rankings. And despite any of its flaws right now, it's still, and I've seen it more than once at this point, it's at my number two spot on my overall DCEU rankings. I had a lot of fun with it. A lot of fun with these characters, with James Gunn's directing style, with his humor. I had a lot of fun, but... Our friends, our friend, our beautiful, beautiful man over at Screen Rant. Ryan George dropped a pitch meeting for the Suicide Squad, and we are going to check it out. So that being said, maybe make sure headphones are on because I forget sometimes. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Here we go. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So, you remember Suicide Squad from 2016? Oh, yeah, that movie that I hired people to kind of chop up, and then everybody blamed the director for how much they hated it. <laughs> That's the one. So, I was thinking we make another one, but we add the to the title. Oh, that has a nice ring to it, actually. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suicide Squad, the. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, the beginning. Yeah, that's good, too. Great. So, oh, damn, like a man. a sequel or a reboot or a soft reboot. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, we're going to take some of the characters from the first movie played by the same actors oh very fun and some new ones too oh yeah there's gonna be a bunch of new characters there's gonna be one named blackguard and i thought we could get pete davidson to play him people love pete davidson that's gonna be a fun character and his face is gonna explode almost immediately <laughs> oh my god i also thought we could get nathan fillion in here oh now he's great what's he gonna do die almost immediately okay wow michael rooker he'd be great to play one of these guys to do what die almost immediately <laughs> okay what is happening we'll see Sir, there's gonna be a whole Suicide Squad team at the beginning of the movie that just kind of gets wiped out as a distraction. Okay, so like lesser known characters, and then you'll have more known characters in the movie too, like Captain Boomerang. Yeah, he's in the movie. So what's he gonna do? Die almost immediately. Oh my god. Okay, Gotta set those stakes early. Is the movie five minutes long? Well, we want to start the movie by sending the message that anyone can die at any time, right? Ah, that's just like even real returning life. characters. Yeah. So anyway, out of that first team, there's Rick Flag and Harley Quinn that make it out alive. And what about on the main team? Who do we have on there? Well, there's this one guy, right? And he's like an amazing shooter, and he's like a reluctant leader, and his main motivation is his daughter. Yeah, Deadshot. I know Deadshot. He was in the last movie. Nope, this uh. is a guy called Bloodsport. Oh. Okay. And there's this other predatory <laughs> animal character that eats humans. Killer Croc. Yeah, I know. No, this is King Shark. Ah, I should stop trying to predict things, I guess. <laughs> You're not particularly good at it, sir. And we also have this other character who shoots polka dots and another one who controls rats. Uh, working for pest control is tight. No, her name is Ratcatcher 2 and she can, like, control rats with her mind. And then there's Peacemaker, who's like Bloodsport, except he murders in the name of Peace. Who were you thinking for that role? Uh, I was thinking maybe John Cena. Oh, you know what? I can't see him in that role. <laughs> because of his catchphrase. <laughs> I understand the joke, sir. I just hate it. That's fair. <laughs> so anyway, pretty much all these characters have sad backstories. Oh, okay. So I imagine they're each going to have a tattoo on their forehead explaining that. No. What? Then how will people know? <laughs> Once in a while, one of them will stop and explain their past to the other characters, which I think you'll agree with. Oh, that Jared subtle. Leto stab there. Yes. And so, yeah, or, well, the stab against the first movie in general. All people's next, which is the whole premise of the thing. Sure. And so she sends them all to this island laboratory to destroy this experiment <laughs> called Project Starfish. So what kind of stuff does the squad get up to on this island? Oh, well, first of all, they need to go save Rick Flag because it seems like he's been captured. Okay. So Peacemaker and Bloodsport, they have this kind of competition where they go through this camp and just kill people in horrific ways, just extremely this, That was my favorite graphic. scene in the whole oh, movie, so I like think. we're talking like an R rating here. Yeah, because this way we get to see some brains and spinal cords and say stuff like 69 and splooge. 69? That's the funny number. <laughs> yeah, it is. And the other stuff and we see yeah, it is. and we got a penis fun. and we got some boobies in the movie as well and it turns out the camp was full of good guys he wasn't even captured oh uh, whoops whoopsie and so rick flag didn't hear any of the commotion no he didn't hear the people screaming or exploding or the guard tower collapsing right next to him how did he not hear any of that well he was in a tent oh tents are known for being soundproof <laughs> carry on and so we're also going to meet up with harley quinn and what's she up to well see since she's the most popular character i figured she should get her own solo movie well she already got 
got her own movie. Yeah, well, she's gonna get another one inside of this one. That makes sense. So she has this whole big side quest and even a love interest, and she ends up being captured by these military people, and she's being tortured for info. Oh, that's painful. It sure is, sir. But then she pretends to be unconscious, and so she strangles this guy with her legs when his back is turned. Well, well, thank God he took a break with his back turned while still within her reach, or that plan wouldn't have worked at all. It worked out pretty great, so then she takes out a whole bunch of military guys with, like, crazy martial arts and stuff. Harley Quinn is better at hand-to-hand -hand combat than a full squad of trained military people? Yes. No further questions. So eventually they get their As are any superheroes and supervillains, apparently. Starfish experiment for, like, 30 years. Okay. And so obviously that's gonna lead into, like, the third act where they have a big situation to deal with. Oh, I see where you're going with this. So what color is the sky beam gonna be? <laughs> so I was kind of thinking maybe we don't do a sky beam? Well, we usually do a sky beam. Yeah, but I was thinking we could do more of, like, a giant hive mind starfish from outer space getting eaten by millions of rats and one of the main characters pierces its eye with a javelin and all the rats go in there. We usually do a sky beam <laughs> Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, it turns out that Amanda Waller told Peacemaker to get this hard drive that proved God, that the he's so good, man. funding the whole starfish thing. Oh. But Rick Flagg doesn't think that's very nice, so they get in a fight and Peacemaker kills Rick Flagg. Very rude. And then Ratcatcher 2 gets the hard drive, so Peacemaker wants to kill her. Yeah, it's gonna be hard for her to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yes, because of an explosion, Bloodsport's gonna fall through multiple stories stories in a building and land in the exact spot he needs to be in to save the day without injury. Oh, that is convenient. It sure is, sir. Then we're gonna and have to see shark falls from a building and gets shot point blank with a bunch of machine guns, but his skin's so tough it doesn't hurt him at all. Very cool. How'd they inject the bomb into his neck? Unclear. And so this explosion is also gonna set this giant hive mind starfish free. Uh-oh. And so this thing shoots out little starfish that attach to people's faces. And that's how it does its hive mind thing. Exactly. So I guess the good guys need to keep their faces covered for the whole fight, huh? No, they just do it like once each and that does the trick. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, cause see, we're gonna wanna see their faces so these little starfish just kinda stop going for them after a bit. Wow, okay, so this hive mind is kind of a big moral dilemma to tackle, huh? Like, do you kill these people that are innocent but they're being mind controlled by an alien? Oh no, we're gonna have a little line explaining that they're corpses under the starfish, so they're already dead. Oh, okay, thank God. So we don't have a sky beam, but we do have a faceless, soulless army. Well, we gotta do some of the classics. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Catcher 2 summons millions of rats to attack this starfish. Seems like maybe she could have solved a lot of the movie's problems all on her own. Yeah, well, this is the climax of the movie, so this is really when they use the full extent of their powers. That's fair. And so, yeah, then Harley Quinn pierces the eye of the giant starfish with a javelin, and that takes care of that. And so they hadn't fired bullets at the giant starfish eye? They did, but only the javelin does any damage. Well, okay, then. And so it is a special javelin. Guy, he's like, I was happy floating in space, looking at the stars. Hey, excuse me, did you just make me feel bad for a giant alien starfish <laughs> with a single line? I did. Wow, 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 wow. And so, yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, you know? I think it's gonna perform great at the box office. Me too, sir. So long as there's not some kind of seemingly unending worldwide event that causes hesitancy in people going to the theaters and also completely changes the way we release movies to streaming. Why would you say that? <laughs> Ryan Gosh, Gantt. this one was actually a little like, I don't know, like he didn't take as many jabs at the movie as he typically does. A lot of it was like more like talking about how the movie does the opposite of the things that they kind of do. I mean, other than like some convenient moments, obviously, like with Harley Quinn and uh, De Blood, I was about to say Dead Sport, Blood Sport falling through the building to uh, help happen, uh, like fall in front of uh, John Cena there. Like, I don't know, man. The rest of it was just like, yes, yeah, this is what you're just you're just doing all kinds of things we don't normally do. I really want my sky beam. Ryan George, man, like he he's 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 a, he's he's a genius. He's a genius. He's a good he's a com com comedy g gold. Uh um but yeah, with that uh whole little pandemic skit there at the end. And there's a million factors as to why it probably didn't do too hot um i know people have tried to break it down like because it's definitely not the movie the movie's fantastic like i said it has its flaws it has its conveniences it has its tropes but it also does it in a very brilliant way and it's a lot of fun i mean if you don't like over the top gore or 
raunchy language or anything like that, yeah, it's going to definitely take you out of the movie. Um, the rated R rating, definitely a factor. Um, and, you know, not unrecognizable characters. There's a lot of characters that don't necessarily, like most people aren't going to know, like your general audiences aren't going to know outside of Harley Quinn. But then again, that kind of, got a little tainted because a lot of people, even though I did it, I love, I, I really enjoyed Birds of Prey. A lot of people didn't feel Birds of Prey. And that, that on top of the name confusion with the Suicide Squad, not knowing if this was a sequel, a reboot, or a remake, or whatever, there's a lot of confusion around what the movie is uh, and what people are supposed to expect. Us within the sphere who, like, watch this stuff all the time and, like, read these things, um day in and day out like we kind of we know what to expect so like we went into it pretty much knowing exactly what we were getting your general audiences your casual audiences have no fucking clue what's going on so that probably hurt it obviously we've got rising concerns we've got more delays I know they just announced that uh venom 2's pushed back um so i mean we're seeing more theaters delay again we're seeing things happen you know uh it had the it did however have the second highest ever in their day and date strategy on HBO Max which just shows most people watched it at home um the only thing that beat it was uh Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat had like what 3.8 million viewers on the opening weekend Suicide Squad had 2.2.8 I think um and then the next highest on that list I think was Wonder Woman 84 with like 2.2 or 2.4 it was like in that range it was like right around there uh, but yeah it was like Mortal Kombat man like people tuned in for that thing but critically it was not <laughs> really all that fantastic I, I mean I did enjoy it between the two obviously I'm going to be watching Suicide Squad again um, but I don't know plus you got the baggage of the first film you've got people who are boycotting anything that Warner Brothers makes that's not by Snyder. There's a lot of a lot of factors going on. Piracy is up, which is funny cuz like now companies are actually looking at piracy numbers. So if they're seeing like a high like volume of their film being pirated even right now, they're like, "Oh, well, I guess it's popular." Like that signals to them like even though they're not getting money, that signals to them that the thing that they put out there is uh sought after so and obviously the day and date thing going on it's so easy to get like crisp full quality copies of these things and i, I know that's kind of hurting things right now too but um yeah it, there's a lot of factors to tie in with this obviously with the overall i think one of it too is the overall like uh degradation of the dc brand over the past couple of years as well, especially among like general audiences, like, you know, it's always been mixed reception with their, the films in general. So I do feel like on top of all this that's going on outside the world, that just adds to people's hesitancy to go check out a new film like this. So especially when it's tied so loosely to these characters, most people aren't going to know, but I had a lot of fun with it, man. I really did. He does pose a pretty good question. It's like, how do they get the bomb in King Shark if he's bulletproof? You also have the question of like, how do those little jellyfish, how do they actually bite him and almost kill him when bullets don't? Are they just using like rubber bullets? <laughs> Maybe they need some, uh, I don't know, man. There's just some puzzling questions in there for like that, but uh, yeah. Um, javelins, javelins, like a special type of javelin. So it, it pierces better than bullets. Fuck if I know, man. It's comics. He's got a magic javelin or some bullshit. I don't know. I don't know jack shit about javelin. Uh, but I don't care. I mean, when I go to the movie like this, I'm not looking for logic. I'm not looking for science. I'm looking for fun. I'm looking for action. I'm looking for just what the movie gave me, man. And it gave me all of that, and I loved it. And I really hope that we see and we are we're getting more james gunn over at dc i'm just curious to see what projects he's going to take up from here you know i know his original idea was to actually have the the suicide squad fight a mind-controlled superman um and 
but and that's what worked into the bloodshot bloodshot god damn it i did it again blood sport um like backstory even though that happened in the comic he did in his first appearance he did injure superman severely with a kryptonite bullet in his very first comic book appearance so it is kind of tied into that and they kept it in here but that's also kind of remnants of that original pitch that james gunn had where he wanted to have them fight henry cavill's superman but lo and behold uh but Warner Brothers doing what they do this is what we got and I still loved it man I still did they they let James Gunn do what James Gunn does and I think this is the closest to an unfiltered James Gunn film as we can get um makes me wonder if like when or if he will go back to just kind of like on it making any original ideas because I know he's diving deep into more DC stuff he's uh got Peacemaker coming out which he's writing all of that and directing most of the episodes and you know, he's even talking about he's got more more stuff that's not announced with DC coming out after that. And it's just like, but man, God. Like, Marvel lost James Gunn, and DC's just like, come on, Gunn, do whatever you want. We'll give you anything. So I'm curious to follow it and see where it goes. This is, uh, I like what they did with this film overall. And, uh, but yeah, as he pointed out, there are some little things here and there, but I did like how it did kind of play with some uh tropes that they kind of twisted on and uh, avoided though while wow. committing to some others you know you know how it was you watched the thing you saw the thing too we were all there anyway guys that's my thoughts on this video sound off the comments let me know yours down below and we'll carry on the conversation after the video or you can join me in my discord or on my socials links to all those are in the description of this video before we go i want to shout out our channel legends mandy share ryan karen jason coleman and philly Vane. thank you guys as always and that's it for this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.